Welcome to the Business Interview, I'm Marcus Carlson. Today we're trying to lift the veil on an industry that critics label as opaque. We're talking about the private equity industry when investment firms put money into privately held companies. The critics say private buyouts too often lead to bankruptcies and job losses, but my guest says the industry is misunderstood and that it's undeserving of its bad rap. Patrick Sayer is the head of Eurasio. It may not be a household name itself, but it holds a majority stake in the car rental firm Europcar. It also holds stakes in the hotel chain Accor and luxury apparel maker Montclair, to name but a few. Uh, welcome to the program. Welcome to the business interview. Hello, Marcus. Now, y you say that you want to demystify private equity. W why is that? Well, it's simply because uh, in many countries, and in France in particular, I believe part private equity is needed for the economy. Uh, the issue that we have in France in, in particular is that in France, we're missing uh, long-term equity. We have a, a scheme of pension uh, whereby people who work are actually paying the pensions of the people uh, who do not work, the, mm -hmm. the, the pensioners, as opposed to the situation in Germany, the situation in the UK, the situation in the US. And that creates a lack of funding for the French corporations, which is, I don't know, uh, 5,000 billion or maybe 10,000 billion of, of effectively insufficient and, funding. And, and why do you think that is? Is it because people it are was, too it was, quick to no, basically portray the private equity it, industry as, as greedy or...? No, no, no. Big, but, well, there, there are two issues. One, we need it because there's no other way. Uh, if we want to create jobs in France, uh, we need companies. If we want to have companies, we need to put money be, be behind these companies. And the situation of private equity is a situation which has been effectively misunderstood uh, at the mid uh, of the last decade, simply because there were people in the industry, not only in France, but actually in the UK, in the US, uh, whose behavior was, I would say, arrogant. Not I, was gonna, I was gonna ask you, I mean, doesn't the industry, son, hasn't it, uh, basically earned its reputation to a certain extent, seeing that a lot of companies in the uh, a few years back, that, that they were borrowing a lot of money, uh, buying a lot of money, and that was seen as one of the contributing reasons uh, to the financial crisis. The, 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 the reason is, is not uh, exactly this one. Uh, effectively, too much money was in the system. Too much money was in the system. Uh, I was in New York in 2001, and I saw uh, effectively from the window of the office in which I was in New York, I saw the second plane uh, eating one of the Twin Towers. If you remember well, just after 9-11, uh, too much money was put by the central bank in the US into the system. Mm -hmm. And whereas in, in 15 days, that money should have been taken out of the system, that money stayed. And effectively, when you can borrow for zero, uh, you have a natural tendency to speculate. And that, that easy money has been in, in existence for too long. And this easy money in 2001, 2002, 2003, 2005, 2006, has created effectively, I would say, a lot of bad behavior from the banks and on a global basis from effectively the, the financial industry at large. But are we uh, creating exactly the same type of bad behavior now? We're seeing a lot of easy money out there. Interest rates, for instance, they're very low at the moment. Yeah, but the situation is, 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 is massively different. And I, I'm speaking for the situation which I know the best, which is the situation in continental Europe. Uh, maybe some people would, would, would qualify the fact that effectively in the US, uh, we're seeing somewhat uh, the same behaviors that we've seen before. But in Europe, the situation is, is totally different. For one reason, uh, the banks do not lend as much as they did. Uh, they are today constrained, especially in, in Europe and not in the US. Mm -hmm. As you know, they are constrained uh, by capital adequacy ratios, the Basel III ratios, and whereas people were ready to, to land uh, on a six, seven times EBITDA uh, in the mid-2000, today the leverage ratios are, are much lower. So in fact today, instead of, of creating, I would say, value artificially just on a financial gimmick, today we are effectively creating value on, on the core substance of the companies. And you've mentioned mm -hmm. uh, some of the companies in which uh, we are key investors. We believe that those companies have fundamental values. I mean, you've mentioned, for instance, uh, Montclair. Uh, I do believe that Montclair, as a, as a, as a value, it's a, it's a luxury uh, apparel uh, 
uh, company. Based in uh, Italy. It's, it's based in Italy. It sells a third in Asia. So Montclair is effectively fueled by the fact that a, a, a massively higher pop proportion of the population comes from Asia, uh, South America, and so on. I want to take our discussion back to the image of the private equity industry because there's been some criticism that uh, some investment firms in your industry uh, buy companies with a view to, to chop them up and basically sell them off for, for parts. That at least has been the image from the outside. What do you say of that criticism? I do say of that that this might have been effectively uh, the attitude of a few corporate traders, I mean, what you know, what you have in mind is uh, is effectively uh, the, the the first uh, buyout of Nabisco, mm -hmm. uh, you know, barbarians at the gate. But it is uh, it is an old-fashioned story. Uh, it might have been the behavior uh, of some of the actors uh, in the U.S. Potentially, but is it, is in the it UK, no longer the behavior in France and in continental Europe? I have not seen anything of the kind. Uh, what then do you say about the wider investment climate at, at the moment? Let's talk about Europe. You've already mentioned. Uh, continental Europe. What, what do you make of the economy here? Well, clearly, the situation in Europe is a situation where, uh, and again, the same mistake which has been done by banks financing uh, in an easy way the private equity industry, the same mistake has been done by banks in financing in an easy way uh, the European governments. And the European governments, having seen an interest rate which has been divided by two or three, depending on the situations, have borrowed heavily, and today, uh, the, 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 the debt to GDP ratios of a bunch of governments in Europe is too high. Mm -hmm. So we have to solve this situation. As we solve this situation, what is clear is that the impact on the growth, the GDP growth, will be affected. Therefore, if you are an investor, you cannot simply invest in a company whose business is solely made of Europe. Because if you do so, clearly, it's going to be either, as, as, as everyone knows, it's going to be either flat or possibly uh, positive, but uh, it's rather flat. So what, you're you saying, have, what you're saying is that there are some opportunities out there, but, but the companies that exist here in Europe, they, they, they need to have, or the kind of companies that you would want to take over, they need to have exposure to, to other markets outside of Europe. Exactly. We are investing, for instance, in, uh, in Font Roche, which is a solar company, which has not only a business in a solar business in France, but in Puerto Rico. As I mentioned, we are investing in Montclair, uh, which is growing a lot in Asia. We are investing in Eden Red, which is known in France by the Ticket Restaurant, which is heavily geared towards Brazil. That's, that's the way uh, we do invest in European companies, but with a global reach, a global basis. But what does it mean, though, for you as an investor when you see the kind of political turmoil that we're seeing in Italy now, for instance, after the election, an inconclusive result coming out of that Italian election? What does that mean for you as an investor? It's short term, it's sad. Uh, and uh, I believe it's J Jesus Christ who said, uh, you know, no, no one is a, is a prophet in his, in his own country. I don't mm. know what's the English uh, word for that. And clearly, th this is what happens to Mr. Monty. And, uh, you know, I'm, as, a, as, as a fan of Mr. Monty, I'm, 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 I'm effectively saddened. But I'm respectful of democracy. Uh, the Italians have taken a decision. Short term, it's going to be turmoil. On the midterm, I think the Italian people... Uh, will take, uh, we'll take a normal stance, and Italy knows that it's a, 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 an integral part of Europe and that there's no future for Italy outside of Europe. So on a two, three months basis, I know that things will go back to normal because they, they cannot go otherwise. Mm -hmm. So to some extent, it's annoying short term. It will create opportunities uh, in, in weeks or, or months to come. And in the midterm, it's just noise. It doesn't matter. You speak there of opportunities. Are you eyeing certain companies at the moment? In we Italy are, or elsewhere, for that we matter? We are always eyeing companies. We are always eyeing companies. All right. Uh, let's talk about France also. France, after all, it's, it's your home market. There has been a lot of question marks when it comes to the investment climate in France and also how pro-business the French government actually, actually is. Uh, what is your sense on that? Clearly, uh, in France, um, I always say that the, the level of uh, uh, economic understanding, uh, the, 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 the knowledge of economics in my country is on a, on a scale from 1 to 10 is, is, rather, on, on, is rather on the low side. Uh, by that, because of that, uh, when the current government, which I do respect, uh, has come into power, uh, a lot of uh, anti-business uh, uh, was 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 said uh, by the candidate, the, pre the, the candidate president himself, by some of his uh, fellow uh, future ministers. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for which 
I've, I've uh, written a book, uh, which is Les Sans Mots du, private, du Capital Investissement. The reason for which I, I wrote that book was partly due to the fact that I felt I had an obligation to try to come and talk to these people, to explain to them how they were going in the wrong direction and how they could shift uh, the, 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 the direction in order, if they want to create jobs, they have to be far more pro-business than what they were before. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, I, I taught them the lessons of the past, and there are some very good lessons. Uh, private equity effectively has been creating jobs far more than the average, uh, I would say, French uh, private uh, in industry, far more than the famous companies of the CAC 40. And I told them that if you want effectively to reverse uh, the, 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 the curve on unemployment, you have to bet on, on this industry. You spoke there about your, your book, which unfortunately so far only exists in, in, in French. The uh, Sans I'm... Mode, the <laughs> Capital Investissement, which basically roughly translated in English means uh, the 100 words of, of private equity. You, you spoke there about the message that you're trying to, to, to give the French government in, in this book. Do you think they're willing to listen? I do believe that right now they're listening, and uh, not to quote any minister, uh, the, the, the here which I get from any one of them and even from member of parliaments is far different as of today uh, from what it was, I would say, last summer. Uh, and if you speak, you know, there are, I can summarize this, this book in three words. Responsibility, uh, solidarity, and sharing of uh, value creation. Mm -hmm. And when you speak those very three simple words, I mean, they, 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 they are very present. They are very pregnant for each of them. And so with these simple words, they can understand where, why, and it, it can effectively make a difference in, in the French economy. All right, uh, Patrick Saya, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap it up there. Thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. Thank you, Marcus. And with that, we're going to wrap up this edition of the Business Interview. Do stay with us here at France 24. We have more news coming your way.